give another round of applause for my cousin Victoria. Yeah. I feel like she just said some very valuable things that we all can live by, no matter if we are children, kids, or uh, my bad, I said children, kids, I'm sorry. No matter if we're children, adults, preachers, no matter where we work at, the things that she just talked to us about, we all can live by that and we all can use it in our everyday lives. So, um, first of all, before I get started with anything that I'm about to say to you all today, I want y'all to know that I actually lived it and it's stuff that I actually went through to get to where I'm at. Because if you would have came to me 10 to 15 years ago and told me I would have been where I'm at today, I probably would have thought you was crazy. Like, straight up, I ain't told you today, as many of you know, growing up, I was just very bad, you know, throwing, throwing rocks at people, cars, doing stuff I ain't never been as doing, just being rebellious. I'm sorry. Just being rebellious, being a rebellious young man, just, you know, being disrespectful to my mom, disrespectful to my uncles, disrespectful to people in my community. And thankfully, you know, how I was 10 years ago, 10 to 15 years ago, I'm not that same person that I am today. And it just didn't magically happen. Like, God had to, you know, instill some things in me, and he had to mold me and change me so that I could become the young man that I am today. So first and foremost, I was that I was the way that I was, you know, growing up. I was rebellious because I had I didn't have any guidance. And yes, my mama did a fantastic job of raising me. Yes, my uncle helped, my sisters helped. You know, everybody played a part in raising me into the man that I am today. But it's hard growing up as a young man when you got your father in your life. I get very hard when your father's not being in your life, not out here to show you how to be a man, not how to show you the ropes, show you the ropes. Like my father never could come to my games or he could never come and, you know, just be that father, that male figure that I needed in my life to get to where I wanted to go in my life. I didn't have that. And so thankfully, Jasmine, I'm going to have to bring it up. Um, you know, when I was in middle school, um, fifth grade, or uh, going to sixth grade, I failed the fifth grade. I got kicked out of middle school, got sent to alternative school because I didn't have any guidance whatsoever. And so thankfully, when I moved back to Byron with my uncle and my grandma and Jasmine, uh, she, you know, she had to date someone named Jared at the time. And my uncle and Jared served as that mentor and that father figure that I needed in my life and that male figure that I was missing in my life because there were some things, there were some potential and skills and abilities that I had in myself that I couldn't bring out because I didn't have no male figure to show me, you know, this is what you need to be doing to get to where you want to go and get your, you know, your act together. My grandma used to tell me all the time, man, man, if you don't get your act together by the time you turn 18, by the time you turn 20, you either going to be dead or you either going to be in jail. So when I sit up here and tell y'all that I'm not supposed to be right here while I'm here standing up here, the man that I am today, I'm really not because I was written off by so many people 10 to 15 years ago. And those same people that wrote me off are those same people that's congratulating me and telling me that they're proud of me. And they say thank you for what I'm here today. So... First and foremost, when I moved back here in um, Byron in seventh grade, eighth grade, I started getting involved with, you know, playing sports. I started hanging around people, you know, that were doing good things with their life, and it kind of showed me that, you know, if those people can do things with their life and they can be a positive impact, then so can I. So I started playing ball, and then I had, I got into high school. I went to um, Peace County, as y'all know, Peace County is a very prestigious high school for, you know, football players, and so. When I got into 10th grade, I started realizing that I had a talent in the game of football, in the game of basketball. Like, I knew I had a talent. And I always wanted to go and play ball at the University of Ohio State. And, of course, like, I knew I had the talent. I knew I had the skill set, the mindset, the work ethic, the grades, the character, all that. I knew I had all that to go to that school. But, quite frankly, it didn't work out for me. And it didn't happen for me. And I remember just after every class, after every practice, after every meeting I would have with any coach, recruiting coach came and talked to me, like I would just cry and be so hell-bent on the fact that those bigger schools would not recruit me and those bigger schools were not coming to talk to me because I knew that, you know, everything that I wanted to do, I was doing it and to try to set myself up to put myself in that position to go to that school, but it just wasn't happening. So I bring this up because, yes, football has been – they put me on a platform that has allowed me to travel across the world and meet so many different people. It has allowed me to, uh, you know, talk, meet so many new friends, talk to so many people all across the world, travel to places where I knew that I wasn't going to go if it wasn't for football. And yes, it gave me a scholarship. I wouldn't have went to school had I not got a full scholarship because this is nothing to knock my family, but we don't have the finances to put nobody in school and pay for it. Like, I wouldn't have went to school had it not been for my full-time scholarship as an athlete. And I bring that up because during that time of me being so hell bent on the fact that those bigger schools wasn't recruiting me, that was the time that I found God in my life. I started coming to church more. I started praying more. I, started, I came to Bible study even when, you know, after practices, after games. 
And, you know, I felt like I was missing something because, yes, I was doing everything that was necessary to get me to go to Ohio State. But the thing that I was missing, the thing inside me that I was missing was my relationship with God. And I found that through football. And so, thankfully, I got to college. And, yes, I got a degree and all that. But no degree, no type of fame, no type of money is more valuable to me than speaking to my community and speaking to people that's just like me. You know what I think about it? People that grew up in the same hood that I grew up in, down in that bottom of that blue house. Those same people, like all the kids that look up to me, everybody, like somebody need to hear my message and somebody need to hear, you know, my vibe and hear the love and things that I have to say to them because if God can take me from what I once was and bring me to where I'm at, He can do it for any of y'all in here. And I mean, 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 I I just love just being, that's why I'm so enthusiastic because I love speaking to my niece and nephew, speaking to Chris, yeah. speaking to all the kids in the same neighborhood that I grew up in, same kids that I went to high school with. Like those kids need to hear the fact that, you know, where you once was and where you are, if they hear from somebody like you, they'll be able to believe that it's possible and they'll know that you are, you know, a walking image of God. And that's one of my biggest messages to the youth. Like don't be afraid to be yourself and don't be afraid to stand out. Like God, and I say that because the God designed each and every one of us in his own unique image. If you don't want to go, like I can remember when I first got to college, all my friends was, they always wanted to go out and party. They always wanted to, you know, do things that we have no business doing. And I always wanted to be different because I know that, you know, if I want to get to the place where God want to take me to, I'm not going to get there trying to be like everybody else and trying to follow everybody else. And that's just being honest. And I just say that because... Like you're not you're not gonna be the person that God intended for you to be when you out here chasing and trying to be like anybody else. You gotta be yourself. You gotta be who God made you. Secondly, if like anybody in the youth, like you always, you're gonna meet a lot of people that's gonna come in your life and talk about the things that they want in life and talk about the things that they want to have for their family. Like, don't get me wrong, like materialistic things are good, and yes, it's great. Like, I want to put my mom in a new house. I want to put my sister and my niece and nephews in a new house. All that stuff is good, but if you don't have something internally driving you or pushing you to get to where you want to go in your life, eventually that fire and desire for wanting that car and wanting that type of money is going to run out. Because I've always been personally driven by the fact that my father has not been in my life. I'm not going to be like that when, my, when I have my future kids. I'm not. I'm going to be able to come to my kids' game. I'm going to be able to go to their schools. I'm going to be able to, to be that man that I didn't have in my life. And that's always been personally driving me. And so I say that because anything that you want in your life, anything that you aspire to be, or anything that you want to attain in your life, you're going to have to get out here and put hours and hours and hours into your craft. I've spent a whole day in the library in college. I've spent the whole day on the football field in mean room working on my game. Like anything you aspire to be, you need to be perfecting your craft and working on that each and every minute of the day. Like I never cared about, like I, I always, like I love playing my video game. My girlfriend will tell you all that. My mom will tell you that. I love playing my video game. And in school, I'm not going to do that type of stuff. Like I'm going to have my priority state. I'm not going to do any of that stuff until I got my work done, until I don't got my work out in, or until I don't took it, took, taken care of my priorities in order for me to do what it is that I want to do in my life. And lastly, like I said, just find something that can personally and internally just drive you and be your wife. I've always been driven by the fact that my family don't have certain things, and I want to be that person that gives my family those certain things. I want to be that person that come back and change my neighborhood and change my school and change my community and give back because I value in reaching back and pulling people up and lifting other people up. And so lastly, my biggest message is, and this is to anyone, if you are still breathing and you're still walking on this earth today, no matter where you work, if you work in McDonald's, if you're a preacher, if you work in Walmart, no matter what your occupation is, if you're still breathing and walking on this earth to you today, that is God's proof to you that you still have more life to attain, you still have more presence to give out in this world. And, you know, my favorite Bible verse is Mark 9, 23, and it says, anything is possible to him who believes. If you want to do anything in your life, you can do it. Don't let nobody tell you you can't do it. 10 to 15, like I said, 10 to 15 years ago, so many people told me that I wasn't going to be what I am at today. And like I said, those same people, those same people come in on our posts on Instagram, Facebook telling us that they're proud of us. Those same people wrote me off. But that's the same people that's congratulating you. Like, those are the same people that are going to want to celebrate you when you have your success. 
So don't let nobody tell you you can't do nothing. You can do anything you set your mind to as long as you have a strong work ethic, work ethic and you put your faith and determination in God. Amen.